here comes the axe and here comes the smasher the demolition a walking disaster Okay, how is this? Hold on. Shut up, Trucker. Blah de blah de blah de blah. Oh my god. George Costanza with that DDT. How is this audio sound? To. Oh, shocky ducky. Oh my god, Jason Ace. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. San Francisco in a disco. I've got some water. <laughs> Ah. So we all good? Okay, so we got five minutes. Oh, I just got a drawing, uh... I just got a drawing on draw something. By the way, that's amazing. I shall, uh... Close Skype. Shoki doki. Alright, so we've got to open that and close. Nah, no, I have to leave that open. Close that. Close demon tools. Close you. Uh, we have five minutes. So. Hmm. Uh, what can we have for five minutes? Let's have a look. Sorry, let's uh... Blank image. Oh god, I can't draw for shit. Huh? Oh, yeah, you can probably hear You won't be able to hear when it's got the audio on. It's like having a bath or something. So.
There we go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to WFL episode 13! 13 episodes in, and we've got a variety of matches here to come up tonight, and we've got a tag team match to start us off. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest for the evening is a tag team contest scheduled for one fall. Introducing the teams first, from Aberdeen, Scotland, weighing in at 227 pounds, Rhett on yellow. Red and yellow making it bigger tonight. He's not been on a much of a roll here lately. You know, it's all that red and yellow being eating too much McDonald's. Those burgers been weighing him down. Let's we'll see if we can make a bit of an impact here tonight. He teams with Munch Calypso. And it's Maximus and one half of the WFL Tag Team Champions, Lotus Dragon. Munch Calypso getting the crowd behind him here tonight. I just look at my notes and all I see is Scottish. And his partner from Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, weighing in at 245 pounds, Munch Calypso. Munch Calypso, formerly known as Munch Mazin, the proprietor, owner, champion of MWAP, making his way to the ring. I, I wouldn't say he's a fan favourite. He's quite, um, he's got his following of haters, in fact, Munch Calypso has. But he looks to turn his ways around, tries to get the people behind him by becoming a pirate following his old ancestry. Also going to boots and buying a few eyeliners. Lining up those eyes. More shadows under there under the bottom of my stairs. Oh my lord. Strapping one, bootstrap barrel. Much clips though. And introducing their opponents. First, from the Bible Belt, weighing in at 179 pounds, Maximus. Here we go, Maximus. Maximus not very happy he's been put into this match. Maximus does not like tag teaming at all. He's a very independent fellow. Likes being put on his own, being able to prove things on his own. We'll see how he copes here tonight with Lotus Dragon. Lotus Dragon is obviously somebody who likes tag team because he's a tag team champion. Let's see how he goes without his tag team partner. And his partner from Kona, Hawaii. Weighing in at 185 pounds, he is one half of the World Tag Team Champions, Lotus Dragon. I was saying, Lotus Dragon, one half of Tag Team Champions, Titanic Tim. Titanic Tim, not here tonight. So Lotus Dragon is going to have to be teaming up with Maximus. We'll see how this team dynamic gets going as we get this underway. Of course, you can follow us here tonight using the hashtags WFL and AES on Twitter. We'll read out some of the tweets later on here tonight. We'll get this underway. A lot of hype for WFL 13 going into this match. Going into this event, you would say. We've got this tag team match going on here tonight. We've got great main event six man tag team matchup later on. And we of course got a tag team match featuring the former tag team champions, El Dede and El Trippy. Now reborn as the new world order, so Trippy Chan and Beardy Chan will be making their appearance in the WFL zone. Later on here tonight. So a lot of hype going into this, and Kurt very hyped up for this match. Get this underway, Red and Yellow Maximus. Red and Yellow, the man from Scotland. Maximus from the Bible Belt, I'm not exactly sure who would wear a Bible as a belt. I don't think it's going to hold up any pair of pants any well. I'm being told that's an expression. Anyway, here comes Munch Calypso. The crowd goes mild. Here we go with the eyeliner leg drop. Oh, no, elbow drop, excuse me. Called the move before he even did it. So good Munch Calypso is. Like I said, he is a former world champion, although under questionable means. Some say he accused him of politicking, but either way, he's former several time world champion. Looks to turn himself around here, come back from a life of dreariness and arrogance, becoming the pirate. Following his roots, did I just say? Yes, his roots. I won't say those kind of roots. Not the roots that you can buy on DVD. But the roots of his ancestry from the port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. Up against Maximus, like I said before, the Raging Pink Lion, not known to be a tag team, right? does not like to tag team. Objected to the match several times on his Twitter feed. You can follow at Maximus or something, I'm not too sure, you can probably find it on the WFL website. Oh, nice take down there. Into the submission hold. Submission, oh, red and yellow there with that full Nelson on the outside. 
Oh, that big chop to the chest. Not sure how much damage that'll do with that shirt on, even still. Crowd could hear that in the front row. Much clips on that. Take advantage of Maximus, those chest chops working in the head. Not the head area. Jeez, that upper body area. How would he be working on his head? Oh. Sorry, Jason Easter's not with it here tonight. Oh, big head to the boot there. Taking some of those crazy pills. Some of that, um, trip martini. Cocktails. Maximus sends red and yellow into the friendly corner, and here comes one half WFL Tag Team Champions, Lotus Dragon. ODD Radio Contest winner. Tourist, many names, many championships. Oh! Jeez! Maximus just got sent flying there. Pink Machismo hit the thinly padded mat. That gets harder to see every week. Suplex there from Brighton Yellow. Send Lodi D to the mat. Gotta think how much of Lodi D is gonna be in this match, knowing that Titanic Tim, I am corrected, is facing the very, very tall Grodon later on tonight. That's gonna be a, a barn burner for sure. Two very, very tall big men gonna fill up this ring. Ooh, right now the bear himself, Lotus Dragon's filling up this ring against the red and yellow, red and yellow. Here we go, Lotus Dragon. Taking the armor, red and yellow. Lotus Dragon not really known as a submission expert. Not known as a technical masterpiece. Maybe he wants to prove everyone different here tonight. Headlock. Nice. Ooh, transition into the back suplex. Bit of chain wrestling going on here. Ooh, arm drag from Lotus Dragon. See, he's going to work on the arm of Rat and Yellow. I'm not too sure why Rat and Yellow is known for um, the kick moves. The, yeah, the super kick. I don't think that involves the arms. Oh, saying that, there's a nice dragon suplex. That certainly involved his arms. And here comes Munch Calypso. Oh, Loaded Dream messing that drop kick and Munch Calypso missing a kick of his own. <coughs> Excuse me, oh my lord. Oof, that was a big head kick there from Lotus Dragon. Oh, knee from Munch Calypso as well. Going back to those chops. Oh. Munch Calypso, he's got a bit of a fire lit underneath him there tonight. Sending all the cannons blazing. Oh, abdominal stretch. Don't think that's going to do much in Lotus Dragon. Very fresh in the match. Reverses into that hip toss. Here we go again. Come back to that back suplex. Got a lot of height on that. It's all about the hangle. The hangle? The angle popping the hips. Thinking three words ahead here. Which, ooh, big German suplex there from Munch Calypso, middle of the ring. Could have gone for a pin, but Lotus Dragon got up straight away. Kind of moves the end matches. But did not end this match. Lotus Dragon now got that advantage, but Munch Calypso takes it back from. Ooh, armbar in the middle of the ring. Munch Calypso. Munch Calypso wants to prove everyone wrong here tonight. Wants to get that crowd following. Once he gets all of the uh, Muncher Maniacs behind him. Wants to go on a Buccaneer in the high seas, win that World Heavyweight Championship Ooh, one more time. Then again, I think a win in this match would certainly put him towards the Tag Team Championships. Oh, big sleep slam there. I'm not too sure how much Calypso would like to be teamed up with for those titles. If he was put in line, perhaps right in yellow. Both part of the United Kingdom, much Calypso formerly from... England. I say form because like I said many times he's changed his ancestry, but Rent Yellow from Scotland. Scottish people don't like English people, so speaking of team dynamics, I'm surprised these two are teaming up so well. Scotland and England connection. <sighs> Maybe it's just a collected disdain for the Lotus Dragon. Oh. Rent Yellow was going for something there. Lotus Dragon just gets out of there. None of this today. Oh! Maybe not Crucifix. Did not go for the pin though. Got rid of yellow working on the arm of Lutz Dragon now. This works either way, folks. You work on my arm, I work on your arm. Here we got Maximus. Double team maneuver. I was going to see here. Ooh, the man of a phaser kicks with a kick of his own. 
like she's using those nerve holds those martial arts moves from a mercenary all those that kung fu just uh, reading the notes here on Maximus apparently he's allegedly killed over 2,000 people with bare hands not doing so well here right now oh. Didn't see much clips though taking advantage of Maximus but I don't think that that is correct I don't know I wouldn't like to say it's correct oh he's not really doing so well right now he's been putting up blast by much clips though which clip so it's not been doing so well either. Maximus last week was in a match with Mick Spade, did come up with a loss. It was up for the uh, Black Lion, Pink Lion brawl. Lion's down. So he's not been doing too well since his debut here in WFL. Oh, nice back. Back move. That move, that back move. Oh, small package. Much amazing. Much, uh, much, one, two, oh, excuse me. Much Calypso, that small package out of nowhere. I've seen a lot of those recently. Could have something hurt. Oh, she you are. Nice suplex, baby. Show me like they do it in port, wherever he's from. Oh, nice. That's the party bomb. Set up power bomb there from Munch Meat. From Munch Clips. Oh my. Munch Clips over that party bomb. Seen him do that many times. Won many matches with that. Oh my word. Just. <laughs> Red and yellow pulling Maximus out of the ring. Oh, just double teaming Maximus. Poor Maximus. Oh, maybe. Oh, just freaking the back of Munch Clips out. Sweeping the leg of red and yellow, he's using that Kung Fu expertise. Looks like a Claude Van Damme film here. Come at, come at him any way you want, he will take you down. Or well, maybe not, he just gets slammed into that crowd barricade, the Lotus Dragon's just kind of meandering over. Doesn't really seem too... Mm, distressed. Or his tag team partner, probably because it's not a Titanic term. Which amazing column for something here. What's he going for here? Ooh, the Munch on Matic. What's that? Nope. Here we go. Referee. Take that pin. Take that pin. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. There we go. That was almost a ten count. Munch Calypso. Red and Yellow taking this match. Here are your winners. The team of Reds on Yellow and Munch Calypso. The Jolly Roger will be mastered high with that victory. I think he might have just knocked Maximus straight out with that. He just dropped him on his head. Did not get up. Like, the referee didn't even count it straight away. That was ridiculous. That was, I think Lotus Dragon will not be impressed with that. Too busy getting knocked out of the ring. Red and yellow. Some good tag team maneuvers from the Englishman and the Scottish man. Austin Ash here backstage talking to Lance Bizarros. Doesn't look very good. Austin Ash hasn't been very impressed with Lance Bizarros recently. This next bout is set for one fall. Introducing first, from Sunderland, England, weighing in at 228 pounds, Rich Lawton. Oh, Rich Lawton, back to his catty ways. We thought we'd gone back to normal last week, but no, here we go again. El Tigre himself, Rich Lawton. I don't know, is this how they do it in Sunderland? Oh my word. Hashtag Tiger is trending on Twitter right now. Just, I never have anything to say about this. I'm just looking at my notes and it's just Rich Lawton. Strange sometimes. Has a boxing background. That is it. That is all I have. Just 
what am I supposed to say about this man? He comes down to the ring, he dresses like a tiger, he wrestles like a boxer. Boxer dog more than an actual boxer, boxer but you know. Just what am I supposed to say about this? Even worse is his opponent, just... Oh my lord, this is just a mismatch made in hell. Just can't wait to get this in the way because this is just going to be... Uh. And his opponent from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 278 pounds, Redneck Ninja. Redneck Ninja coming off a strong win last week, won with that Corsican Rana. Came back big time, he was losing, and he came back with that Corsican Rana. We'll see if he uh, comes up with a good victory against Rich Lawton. Nothing on the line here apart from pride. I'm sure Redneck Ninja wouldn't like to lose to Rich Lawton considering Rich Lawton's status. Both in just rankings and just how people view him, I suppose. Like I said before, you can follow us on Twitter, hashtag WFL, hashtag AES. Later on in tonight, I will read out some tweets. Let's have a look what's going on on the Twitter feed right now. Redneck Ninja makes his way to the ring. Redneck Ninja does have a Twitter himself. Find out most people's Twitters if you go onto the WFL website. See, now we'll have a look on the Twitter feed. Rudy Cameron is indeed backstage at WFL. I also see Derek Bryson tweeting. And Jay Gunn tweeting as well, as well as Mickey Spade. The Twitter feeds are blowing up. And here we go. Like I said, a mismatch made in hell. I believe this was... The bill on the card was, this isn't a drunken hallucination, I swear. And I'm not too sure about that, considering what Trip Martina gave me earlier. We got Redneck Ninja from St. Louis, Missouri. Gonna ooh, show his ninja's training right there. Rich Lawton. I think he gives him any more kicks like that. Coming out next week dressed as a dog. I think he might just knock him right. Redneck Ninja going behind now. Oof, just this matchup, just look at these two guys. I just noticed how pale Ooh, big back suplex Rich Lawton skin is. Just deathly pale. That's eerie. Ooh, big handman's net breaker there. Going around. Reading that ninja. Literally wrestling circles around him. Red ninja got that big build. I show you that is not muscle, that is a an expanding big up. Ooh, nice arm drag there. Oh, Ooh. see, you don't expect those big head kicks and flippy moves from Red Net Red Net Ninja, and he pulls them out every time like that. Like nice crane kick. Excuse me. You smell the lager from here. Ugh, I, I, I don't think that's lager actually. That's disgusting. Oh, big lung blow with that from Red Net Ninja. He's going and working on that back and arm area of Rich Lawton, like I said before, boxing. He's had the boxing training, he has had the boxing expertise. He likes to use those punches in his matches, as well as head psychology, apparently. He's going to go for that shin breaker. Smart man. Eliminates the kicks out of Redneck Ninja's arsenal, or at least weakens them. As well as top rope moves, it requires a lot of balance. See that, that handman's net breaker. Once again. Oop. See, there we go. And that ninja was ready for that though, he's had a few bar brawls in his time. There we go, just Rich Lawton get back in your petting corner. Ooh, shotgun drop kick. Right in the corner. Right in the chest of Rednet of uh, Rich Lawton. Mike caved it in there. I think he's gonna need some cat drugs after that. Oh, big power bomb. Oh my word. One, two, three! Oh my lord, Rednet Ninja winning with that power bomb. Picks up the win very quickly here tonight. The winner of this contest, Redneck Ninja. Redneck Ninja just folded up Rich Lot like an accordion. And when that accordion played, it played Meow. For the free. That roller power bomb. Athleticism, strength, and build. Redneck Ninja pulling out here tonight. My word, the fans are going wild.
all over Twitter, all over the arena. There will be a party here tonight at your local bar. Thanks to Redneck Ninja's victory, the country won't dare devil pulls it out once again. It's been on a real good roll. Rated T for team. is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Hartford, Connecticut, Amber. Amber! Amber, Amber made a debut here last week, so did her opponent last night. Last, uh, so did her opponent this week. She's making her uh, debut last week. Also facing her tonight. This is a very uh, high profile matchup considering both of these LOL ladies want to make a big impact. Going into Excalibur, our next pay-per-view. Featuring a lot of title matches and other stuff, I am sure. Have a look on Twitter right now. Hashtag that's not Pepsi is trending worldwide. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if she's a fan of Pepsi. And introducing her opponent from Japan, Aoi Shinigami. Sorry, I was just uh, checking out some tweets there. Oh, yeah, Shinigami just bringing a chill to this arena. Oh, just those long nails, just that entrance, just... Not too sure what is with Oye Shinigami. Bit of an enigma, and so is Amber Ember. Just a battle of two unknowns right here. Here we go, Amber Ember, Oye Shinigami. Two ladies do not know much about, probably learn a lot about them in the middle of that ring. They say that's the best way to learn something about competitors, just stick them in that ring. See what they would do, given a period of time and an opponent. Amber Ember, that very tall frame, got the uh, size advantage of it. Oye Shinigami, lady from Japan. That's all we pretty much know about her. She's a geisha grappler from Japan, very aggressive. Did not win last week and neither did Amber Ember. Still, they looked very strong and they want to look very strong going out of this match. Just, just brutal. Brutal. Hits the head off the turnbuckle. It's very thinly padded, like I say. It's the thinnest padding we can afford. Because cupcakes are expensive. Oh, big back suplex there from Oe Shinigami. Oh, slaps. It's not even gone for those traditional strikes, just slaps to the face of Amber Ember. That's something you normally see. Oh, I think she went for another one there, but Amber Ember caught the arm. Ooh, went for an elbow. Where is she? got me. Rolled out of the way. Oh, right, working on the arm now. Amber Ember! Punched the head. Ooh, we have seen from Amber Ember, she's... Oh no. Would I say vain? She's very conscious about her appearance, and it's easy to see why. Beautiful, beautiful lady. Follow her, Amber Ember, on Twitter. Ooh! Striking the head of Oi Shinigami. Going up behind. Oh, I know. Amber Ember did not manage to do a move there. Very back and forth matchup here early on. Oh, another big slap from Oi Shinigami. Just insulting Amber Ember. Ooh! Big DDT. This could be it. Go for more slaps. Amber Ember responding with big kicks. Got to keep that distance. Keep that distance with those kicks. Keep those long legs in the way. Oi Shinigami can't get in on Amber Ember. Oh, sweep the leg. Maybe not. She telegraphed those kicks. See him coming from a long while away. Oh, face buster. There we go. 
again, just come back to those legs. Oh, and another kick to the head. That's got to hurt. Rattle your brains, rattle your skull. Oh, shit, again, the first strike we've seen, that's not a slap. Big clothesline from out of nowhere. Sudden aggression. Oh, back to the slaps. Just, just unbridled rage. Just, you see the rage in her eyes from here. Jason East here at ringside. And certainly Jason East right here. You can see that rage. Oh, there we go again. Just taking out all that passion, fury on Amber. Remember. That's that's disturbing. That is pretty disturbing. Transition there from Amber Ember. Oh, nice suplex. Textbook suplex. Like literally you open a su oh, suplex textbook and you go to suplex and that is what you would see. Mm. There we go, suplex number one doors. The back suplex. Oh, smashing boys face into the canvas. Go again, go kicks to the behind. Oh, that's reverse STO there from Amber Ember. It's really wicked over Oi Shinigami. She's got her on a roll. Gotta keep up this momentum. Come out with a big move and walk out with a victory. So you would think. Oh, both of the ladies will not be in the scramble match at Excalibur from what we have seen. Maybe not. There'll be that five low low lady scramble match for the WFL Women's Championship. Either way, this. A win here would put them in line for a future championship match. Big back suplex. Here you go, he's always gonna go for a pin. Here you go, referee's that. One, two, ooh. Too early. I'm there, my kicks out. Oh, he's going for the reverse. Wish you got me. Ooh, nice drop to a hold. But the textbook's wrestling. Ooh, there we go. The Shogun shot. That ends the Guri. This could be it. Oh! The Rising Sun kick to the head of Amber Ember. She could be knocked out cold. This could be it. The Rising Sun. One, two. Ooh! Amber Ember kicked out. Amber Ember kicked out of Oishinigami's finishing maneuver. That Rising Sun kick. From what I have seen, I think she went for last week. Oh, just driving oh, his shoulder into the into the turnbuckle. I think oh, he's going to be pretty. Uh, see, respect is everything in Japan. If she feels disrespected, she's going to feel pretty angry right now. One, two, three, and it's over. Oishinagami walks out of this match, the winner. Here is your winner, Aoi. Shinigami. Oh, Shinigami walking out with this. I don't think Amber Ember is going to be very pleased with that. She's going to go on a bender indeed. Oof. I'm not too sure if I would like to be on the recipient of that kick. It did not put Amber Ember away, but I did think it knocked her silly, which gave Oi Shinigami the win here tonight. Great matchup between these two ladies. Oh, and here's Shaman! Shaman, who Oi Shinigami attacked last week in her debut, is getting a return. Oh, she's getting a revenge right now. Shaman getting a revenge on Oi Shinigami for that beatdown that she gave her last week. Shaman from out of nowhere. The following triple threat contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Melbourne, Australia, weighing in at 231 pounds, Dingo Patterson. Dingo Patterson making his way to the ring. This match has been billed as the small, angry white man match. Dingo Patterson did not like that. He's the smallest and angriest and whitest man in all of WFL, and he didn't like being told so. And I think that just made him more angry, so he's going to go into this with a bit of, a, a bit of venom behind those snake eyes. We have venom behind us. Venom behind us. Uh, whatever. It made sense. It made sense. I mean, it made. It made sense. It made sense. He's from Australia. Get it? That's you know, snakes. Australia. I'm sure he's actually probably got a snake tattoo somewhere. 
once he takes his shirt off, we'll be able to see. Either way, Dingo Patterson's been on a bit of a roll here. There we go, see, snake tattoo. Snake tattoo, I'm right. I've got a whole cornucopia. Dingo Patterson is going to take out this rage here tonight on the two opponents in this triple threat matchup. Cobra T and Mike Kender will get into those men how do they make their way to the rink? Approaching the ring from no place in particular, weighing in at 187 pounds, Cobra T. Washington. Cobra T. Washington has been on a bit of a losing streak last week. Sir Dan Danielson III picked him to be his mystery tag team partner. He pulled up short, losing the match for his tag team. Just gotta be losing that morale. He's gotta be losing that will to fight. But maybe we'll see him pull that victory here tonight in this triple threat matchup. Everything to go for. Nothing to lose. Never mind that shit. Here comes Kendo and their opponent from Truth and Consequences, Scotland, weighing in at 226 pounds. Mike. Kendo. Well, here comes Mike Kendo. What? Just what am I supposed to say to that? Oh my word! I just did not expect that. That was terrible. You did someone steal the microphone? What happened there? Did Mike Kendall just like run past a gorilla position and just grab a microphone or Who did who did that? Who did who, seriously like who did that? This is PG. That's disgusting. It's terrible. But kids watching. Kids what they, they watch pony shows. They're not used to this. They're probably like com they're going into shock. They're just bursting into tears. We're gonna be pulled off the air. This is terrible. Ugh. It's gone on this. Uh, oh, just underway. See, there's a kid in the front row there, he's foaming at the mouth, he's wearing a Pinkie Pie t-shirt. He's not used to this. Mike Kendo now. He should be banned. Ooh, that DDT. Oh, Mike Kendo is used to these triple threat matchups, used to fights with more than one man. He sure is a brawl. Mike Kendo, Dingo Patterson. Probably the uh, more brutal out of the three. Cobra T is probably not stranger. No stranger to uh, love. Well, fights, I guess. Gloves like that from Cobra T Washington. Like I said, a lot of anger going into this considering Cobra T lost last week. Mike Kendo Scottish. And Dingo Patterson got called short and white. That made him more short, white, and angry, and that made him more short, white, and angry. I think he, he like shrunk half an inch. Is there like an anger to size ratio? I don't know. Ooh, big bulldog there from Dingo Patterson. I do believe there is an anger to size ratio. Would someone like to tweet me what the exact numbers, the figures are for the anger to size ratio? I will I will read that out. You and Cup Washington taking advantage of the down by Kendo. Working on his arms. Making his way over to Mike. Dingo Patterson. Sorry, that fan's just been squirted out of the way in the stretcher. We'll give you an update on that later on here tonight, or hopefully he's farting. Yeah, he's just been cutting out of the arena. I believe he's screaming, Loney? Tony? I think his dad's called Tony. Or I don't know. Right, let's, let's carry on with this triple threat match. Oh, Cobra I think he was going to go for a dragon suplex there. Push that from Mike Kendo. 
Oh, and here we go. Shiranoi! Is that right? I don't even know. From Cobra T. Washington. Ooh, big running boxing punch. Ooh, we see Cobra T with that. It's got a bit of a brawl. It's got a bit of a brawl in background. I don't know where he's been trained though, he's from no place in particular. He's got that Union Jack on him though. Maybe he has British roots? I don't know. Nice handstand out of the ring there. Athletic. Oh, Mike Kendo as well. That was athletic. <laughs> there we go again. Oh, nice chair shot. Oh, my word. Oof. Oof. Cobra T. Washington. Oh, my goody. Oh, my giddy aunt. Oh, my giddy giddy aunt. That was. That was. Brutal. That was worse than Mike Kendo's entrance theme. All those chair shots to the head of Dingo Patterson and Mike Kendo, they're both clutching the foreheads. Ooh, sugar butties. Oh, a spear from out of nowhere, Kobe T. Washington. Been watching that American football. All these headshots. This is like modern warfare. Apart from all these screaming kids, but actually we did have a screaming kid at Rain Tag. He's been escorted out of the arena, foaming at the mouth because of Mike Kendo's entrance theme. But there you go, Mike Kendo with those. We well, went for a Mongolian chop. <laughs> Kobe T went for that springboard crossbody, but he went to no place in particular. He hit no person in particular. Just punches, punches, and bunches. Ooh, DDT from Mike Kendo. Aneurysm. Certainly give... Ugh, certainly give Dingo Patterson an aneurysm. Sorry, I just... My inner core has been shook. Oh, oh, Dingo Patterson. Ooh, nothing scientific about that. No science involved. Ground and pound. That GSB background. And please try and figure out what GSB stands for. Oh, kicks to the head. Cooper T. Washington is waiting with that chair. Oh, you know what's coming. Oh, he's putting that chair in the way. Oh! Dingo Patterson, he... I'm not too sure if he landed on that chair. Cooper T. put it on Mike Kendo. Oh, here we go. Cross, cross face. Rope break. Cooper T. put that chair on top of Mike Kendo. Dingo Patterson went for that center and he missed. I think he landed on the chair. Oh, my word. Just clutching his head and back. Gotta hurt. Oh, big back suplex. <sighs> Giving in the boots and the slippers. That kendo is up though. He does not stay down for long. He needs to go in for another round. Ooh. Let's move that from my kendo. Ooh. Here we go. Irish whip. Knee to the face. Group of T's there now. Oh, Dragon Suplex. This could be it. One, two, oh no. Breaks up the kit. Breaks up the pin. Dingo Patterson with that fighting spirit. Ooh, DDT to the face of Cobra T. Bleeding all over the place. There we go. Aneurysm again. Dingo Patterson's right there though. Yeah, I thought so. Breaks up the pin. Cobra T. Washington just leaving a big trail of blood everywhere. Just leaving that red sauce everywhere. Oh, we're going to see it again. Oh, another DDT. Mike Kendo going for the pain. Cobra T is right there, though. Two. Oh, no, I did not think so. Oh, he's going to go for that Dingham Lariat. That Dingham Lariat. One. Two. Oh. Break that up. That roll up. It's that dirty, dirty roll up we've seen win so many matches here in WFL. All freestyle. Oh, Dingle Patterson was going for something there. Oh, nice jumping complete shot from Mike Kendo. A lot of shots being fired here tonight. WFL 13, triple threat matchup. Dingle Patterson, Kobe T. Washington, Mike Kendo in the ring. Oh, low blow. Like, literally, low blow to Dingo. It's gone down to the land down under. 
Oh, nice flip power driver from Kobe to Washington. Sending him to paradise. Mike Kendo is up there. Oh, small package. Small package. One, two. Yeah, I could not even get behind that. Mike Kendo was just right there, waiting for that pin. Oh, Lufez press. See, Dingle Patterson has had an outlet to take out all of his anger, and so has Mike Kendo, in fact. One, two, no. Of course. Wasn't even in question. Unless, like, he missed a leg drop or something? I don't know. <laughs> Dingo just threw Mike Kendo into the robes. Said just no science about that. Just, yep, just throw him. Cobra, he's in the Cobra clutch. Oh, Mike Kendo just, just broke that up. How ironic would that be? Cobra T to be tapping into the Cobra clutch. Oh, Dingo Patterson. Yes, I can just see him from here, just been busted open as well. Mike Kendo making everyone bleed, making everyone pay. Oh, Cobra T just been smashed on that chair. Dingo's right there, though. Oh, Dingo Patterson, what's he going to do? Oh, knee to the face of Mike Kendo. Oh, here we go. Cobra T's there, though. Yeah, it breaks up that pin. This match has certainly been a brawl. Brawling all around in the inside of the outside of the ring, using weapons. Various which ways. I kind of Ooh, just threw Dingo Patterson by his throat. Throwing that small angry white man. Cobra Tino. Ooh, working the armor, Mike Kendo. Oh, Drops all to Mike Kendo. Not too sure what he's going for now. Dingo was right there, though. Oof. Just brutal. Just brutal. No other word for it. Just brutal. Oh! Aneurysm again to Dingo Patterson. Here we go again. One, two, no. There's not been a pin that's not been broken up so far. That's the triple threat matchup. This match probably would have ended at least two times by now. Here we go again! Oh, There we go, Dinkum Lariat. Dingo Patterson goes in for the pin, Mike Kendo's there though. Two. Oh, Kendo's breaking up. That's the thing, this match could have ended so many times. But the triple threat mechanic keeps all competitors in play. Mike Kendo with those devastating DDTs. Trying to drag Kobe Chi at the corner. Dingo is up though. I think Kobe Chi's been knocked silly by that DDT. Oh, that was nice. All three of these men just holding their heads. Seen those chair shots earlier on from Kobe T. Washington, as well as all these repeated DDTs and other maneuvers. Nice spine buster. Two, no. Kobe T. breaking that up. Don't know why they gotta go for these big maneuvers. Why, why can't they just kick them? Gotta do some flips. I sound bad from Dingo. Kobe T managed to slip out of it though. He's gonna go for the pin, Mike Kendall's right there though. One, two, yeah, I did not think so. Oh, nice loop fares. Ooh, you go on Twitter right now, you mad is trending. Obviously referring to this match. Oh, all these angry white white men. They are certainly mad. Taking it out on each other. Nice DDT there from Mike Kendo, I think. The 15th, 16th DDT? I lost count. Oh! Cobra T. Washington going for a ride. Mike Kendo is stallion. Oof. Big back suplex from Dingo Patterson. See, that is it. As soon as one man is down, another one gets back up. But his competitors are beginning to slow down. Oh, jumpy complete shot. Real dead ringer for love. This could be it. What's he going to go for here? He's going to go for paradise once more. There we go. One, two. Oh, Mike Kendo breaks it up. Oh, jumping complete shot. Oh, there we go. Aneurysm. Oh, 
Spear! 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 Oh, dragon suplex. Dingo Dizzy. Two. Three! Gilbert T. Washington wins the match. That dragon suplex. Oh my word, what a match that was. Here is your winner, Cobra T. Washington. Cobra T. Washington just went and speared Dingo Patterson out of his boots, knocked him silly completely, went and suplexed, rolled up Mike Kendo, walked out with that finish. And oh my, oh my, oh my. That was a good match. That was a hardcore match. Both paid a price to win this. You see, Cobra T with us wins the war. Box out with a victory. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, coming down the aisle from London, England, weighing in at 383 pounds. He is one half of the World Tag Team Champions, Titanic Tim. Titanic Tim making his way to the ring, the Lost Strang Giant. Man from London, England, one half of the current WFL Tag Team Champions. One does titles in a Tag Team Tables match against the new, 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 new World Order. See where he goes on here tonight against Grodo. Grodo on a lot of the ground, as well as many other things. We'll get into that as he makes his way to the ring. And his opponent from Kyushu, Japan, weighing in at 356 pounds, Grodo. You see, when you think about Groudon, there's just one word that comes to mind. Well, three, really. He's so tall! He's so tall! He is so tall! He's so tall! He's so tall. He is so tall. He's so tall. Groudon is certainly pretty damn tall. And I gotta say, when you look at Groudon, he's pretty tall. So anyway, Groudon making his, uh, his tall last way to the ring. Excuse my language. Making his way to the ring is going to take on the also somewhat tall Titanic Tim. He's not tall. He's large, but he's not tall. Groudon, you see, he's tall. Groudon's like the upper echelon. He's like that big building in Dubai I forgot the name of. Titanic Tim just like the Eiffel Tower, he's just a little light Eiffel Tower. To everyone else he's the Eiffel Tower, but Titanic Tim, he's that big hotel that no one ever goes to. He doesn't really like. But yeah, he's so tall. He is so tall. Tall to tall to tall 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 to tall. Tall to tall tall tall. Grodon with that tall to tall. He's going in for the tall. That big tall elbow. It's tall outside of the ring. Oh, Titanic Tall making his way back into the tall. Two tall giants. Oof. I think when they took um, Grodon to the WFL. Oh, nice move there. It was like Groudon when he signed up for WFL, he was asked him, oh, what do I gotta do to get into WFL? He said that he had to ask for a long wait. He said Groudon does not ask for long waits, he only asks for tall waits. So that is how Groudon got a job. And that's why he's here, and he's facing one half the tag team champion, Titanic Tim. Titanic Tim taking it to Groudon. Oh my word, look how tall he is. <laughs> Yes, how can this ring hold these two men? There's a great comment there from Jagon on Twitter. Titanic, no, excuse me, Gre tall. Taller, Bob. 
Oh my word. Oh, look at Look how high that went. That was like so high. Oh, oh my word. Just Look at the size of this guy. This match is just asking me to commentate this. This is just the finger beauty. This is just like the March of the Penguins. There needs to be no audio, really. This just needs to be... This needs to be left alone for a thing of nature. Two titanic gargantuan tolls fighting each other in their natural habitat in the middle of that, that ring, that four-sided square. The squared circle. Really taking it due to a titanic term. Ooh, look at, look at the size of him! Oh! Imagine we hit that spear. Oh. oh, look at the distance. Look how tall he went. Tall Paul. Great on. Lord of the ground. Don't know why they call him the Lord of the ground. He's so far away from the ground considering how tall he is. Oof. Great on. Titanic Tim, both in M what formally. Working on those arms, the Titanic tall. Tim. Tim! Titanic Tim! Tim, 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 Look at the stomach there, Titanic Tim. Ooh. 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 Overarm rise. Right of his own, Titanic Tim. Tall Titanic Tim. Titanic tall. The last strong tall. Ooh, big back suplex. Overhand rights again. Ooh, Titanic team! Ooh, that big German suplex. Just, just, just go on Twitter. Just look at some of these. Just, I, I don't even want to use them. Just the puns, the puns. This match is just unlimited potential. Oof, elbow to the back of the head. I'm just gonna call this straight down the middle. It would be a tall order for me to call this. Oof, to give this. <sighs> if we keep this up, the whole universe is gonna die. Big sidewalk slam. Ooh, Titanic Tim is up there. Ooh, we're great on. Oh, German. German. Ooh, those suplexes. Three of them. I think Gradon's getting <laughs> Titanic Tim just. <laughs> nope. Just guess out of there. Not having any of this. Oh, maybe so. Oh, earthquake. That was an earthquake. That was literally an earthquake. That was like a 15.8 in the Richter scale. One, two, three. Oh, no, Titanic Tim kicks out. Bit of a tall order for Gredon to win this match. Titanic Tim. He kicks out in an earthquake. I'm wordless. I'm speechless. Just this match is just... This is... This is tall! This is tall! This is unbelievable! Titanic Tim, with that resilience, you can only see from the last strong giant. Oh my word. Ooh, drop kick. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure. It was like someone just grabbed the other headset there. Great, I'm going for in for that pin. Two, three. Gredon wins this match. Oh my, oh my word. Your winner of this match, Gredon. Well, thanks for coming, folks. We're never going to ma get a match better than that one. So we might as well just, like, stop now. So, it, Waffle's been cool, you know, WFL's been cool. It's been nice knowing you guys, but we're never going to have a match that's going to beat that, like in star quality, in technical wrestling, so, yeah. Oh, never know, what's, what's great on doing? Is that George Costanza? George Costanza? He's taking a nap on those tables.
Groudon, don't get up. Don't. don't. Groudon, you're gonna be tall. No, Groudon! No! Groudon! No! Believe it or not, George Costanza may be dead. Not George! Not George! Poor George! Assassin's Creed free. This next contest is set for one fall. Introducing first, from Portland, Oregon, weighing in at 242 pounds, Duke Hagen. Yay, time for Duke Hagen. Hashtag swag is not trending on Twitter. But, um, hashtag rip to that boy is trending on Twitter. They're still clearing up the rubble. What the hell was Gredon doing there? I think he just plain split George Costanza in half, like literally. He was. Came down from that tall, 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 tall height off that turnbuckle. Smash George Costanza through two tables. Poor man, he was just taking a nap. He was just taking a nap. Gredon just went out there and just he murdered him. Hey, poor Costanza. I'm like Costanza. I've just. Usually I have no sympathy for the poor man. Oh, just poor Costanza. Hashtag tall. Now trending on Twitter. Either way, Duke Hagen's gonna have his... He's gonna have a different mindset going into this match. In a bit of a losing streak, he lost at Dreamtime to Psycho Dinosaur. The man formerly known as Psycho Dinosaur. Austin Ash. Goes up against this man. And his opponent from Cambridge, England, weighing in at 239 pounds, Estramir Master. Estramir Master, a man who was on a losing streak. I'm certainly sure he'll be happy with George Costanza being broken in half. God is my witness. Considering that he, he, he ended that losing streak that he had last week by defeating George Costanza. Pretty good match. He debuted a new version of the Masterfall. That double underhook DDT we've seen him use so many times. That brutal modification of it. If George Costanza needed a nap, he might have had a concussion. That's what he needed. See what Astromaid does here tonight against Hagen. Here we go, we'll get this, get this match underway. Duke Hagen versus Astromir Mastern. Duke Hagen going for that suplex earlier on. Ooh, showing his strength. Ooh, nice. So, as we get this match underway, let's have a look on Twitter. Let's, um. Let's see what the fans are doing right now. As we being informed of George Costanza's condition. Don't think he's going to be able to recover from that. Uh, Amber Ember seems slightly bitter that Aura, that Oi Shinigami beat her early on here tonight. Trippy Chan, will it be here, here tonight as well? Um, let's have a look. So, Reddit Ninja also very happy that you win this match. He's not too sure. He moves completely there for it. Get a bit of a bit of a. What was this? Hallucination? 
So here we go, a hashtag rip to that boy, still trending. So we'll see how George Costanza recovers. Ooh, let's see. I this match underway in the ring, Eskrim must turn in the blue. Oof, Duke Hagen in the yellow and black. Oof, that was a kick to the midsection. Ooh, big jackknife powerbomb from Duke Hagen. Punches, punches. Now for the go to behind of Estremir. Wrestling. Wrestling! Oh, Duke Hagen and punches again. Throwing Estremir into the corner. Gotta eliminate that wrestling of Estremir. It's the advantage that Estremir has over him. That wrestling background, that technical background. Nope. Wrench that arm. I'm gonna go for it. Ooh, nice. Leg sweep. Oof, a nice bulldog as well. I should must earn the real competition. Former World Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Hustler of M1. On a bit of a roll. Ooh, nice suplex. Is someone... Someone would like to say that Estremir has recently cracked it. He has gone over the hill. He has... Trying to think of more expressions. It, he has flipped his lid just over the recent losses, especially where George Costanza is concerned. I don't think George Costanza is going to be competing in any ring recently. Like, at any time soon. Ooh, considering. Splash. Spl splash through the table. Oh my word. Oh my shucky ducky. Speaking of ducks. Drew Kagan. Oh, nice dropkick. We go going, going into that headlock. Oh, nice suplex. GK again showing his showing his true colours here tonight. Showing that showing that thrill for competition. He wants to prove himself. He wants to come back from that loss to Austin Ash. He wants to go on a winning streak. He wants to put himself in line for a championship. Those glorious, glorious championships that make up the wealth of World Freestyle League. European Championship currently held by Mick E. Spade. Intercontinental Championship currently held by Sir Dan Danielson. Ooh, World Heavyweight Champion Derek Bryson. As well as the Tag Team Champions we've seen here compete here tonight. And of course some qualifiers for the WFL Women's Championships will be held later on here tonight. In fact, one will be held after this. So stay tuned for that call and elbow tie up. We've got Duke Kagan and Irish Whip to the Englishman. Ooh, he almost hit the referee there. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I should remember Stone going to behind and going to the downstairs. And Duke Hagen. Knocking out that leg from underneath him. <laughs> there we go again. Ooh! I thought he was going to go for a suplex. Duke Hagen just need him in the head. Duke now. Oh, nice move. Brain Buster! Extreme is up though. Stomping on the leg of Duke Hagen. Don't think he liked that. He busted that brain. Well, that's an expression I should have used. Extreme Mastern has been going quackers. There we go. I had to get that in. Here we go. Ooh, attack in the face with his forearm. Ooh, here we go. We're working on that head area. Setting him up for that DDT later on here. Maybe. Ooh. Oh, nice move there. Shout out. From Duke Hagen. Duke Hagen now. Perhaps going to go... Oh, nice move there. Oh, just contorting back and neck of Estremir. Certainly going to hurt. Duke Hagen's calling for something. Not fan favourite. I don't think the fans will like it. If he pulls this out. Wrenching in the head. Oh, swinging Estremir around. This could be it. He goes for the pin. This could be it. One, two, ooh, Estremir kicks out a two. I thought that was surely going to be a win. That swinging DDT, Duke Hagen got all that momentum. Here we go again. Oh, and there we go. Hashtag swag, but Estremir is up. Here we go. Real competition is on a real roll. Oh, shucky ducky. Ooh, silence. There is, the silence has fallen. Estremir Stern just... Pulling out all these moves. This could be it. 
Here we go. Could we see it? Could we see it? Masterful number two. That is it. Just goes in for that cover. This could this could be one, two, three. There we go. Estramir wins this match. I actually remember Stern looking very dominant here tonight. Masterfall number two. That's the movie used last week to beat George Costanza and used it this week to beat Duke Hagen. Certainly a movie you've got to look out for. Took two of Duke Hagen's DDTs and got up and given one of his own. Pulls out the victory here tonight. Yeah, very proud man. Very proud in Cambridge, England. See the new world order. Beardy Shand, Beardy Zilchin Gender. Oh! Is that. Oh my word! I'm for a Jaska! Is that I'm for a Jaska? From out of nowhere, just attacking Beardy Zilchin Gender. Poor, poor old Beardy. Just had his sister attacked in front of him. The following triple threat contest is scheduled for one fall, where the winner will go on to compete in the five-way scramble match for the WFL Women's Championship. Introducing first, from Berlin, Germany, Angela Brennan. Angela Brennan, oh my. I think she'd, she'd, she'd appreciate that, I guess. A lot of venom between these. Oh my word! All these, all these little ladies certainly do not like each other. A lot of big, big competitive atmosphere. It's easy to see why when what's on the line: WFL Women's Championship, big prize. It's what this gives you an opportunity at. From Chicago, Illinois, Astus. Of Astus, certainly Chill has just crept into this arena. Oof, this ever eerie Astus. Recently, just started to speak. What words were said? Just a strange, strange woman, and that's really saying something considering some of the people we have in World Freestyle League. To say that someone is strange is really saying something. Aestus flipping back and forth between Sunny and Moody. Their opponent from New Orleans, Louisiana, Lola Jazz. Hey, Lola Jazz, we're not seeing her in a few few weeks. Not seen Lola Jazz in a while. Making a return to the WF zone, WFL zone. Bit of a fan favourite. Peppy. It's got a bit of a uh, kick to her. She's a good singer, used to be a dancer, something like that. Something about Intergalactic Television or something? Intergalactic Television 6? I don't know. Oh, the jazz. Oh, bring out the doves. Here we go, Angela Brennan, Aestus and Lola Jazz. Lola 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 Jazz. It's on the way. Of course, you can tweet your feelings and thoughts about this match. Hashtag AES and hashtag WFL. This match, of course, will give the winner an opportunity. Well, it will put them in the championship scramble match for the WFL Women's Championship to be held, I believe, at Excalibur. There we go. <coughs> Hang Hang woman's net break there from Lola Jazz. Hashtag, 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 Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Because WFL also sponsored by Tenga. You get your pleasure any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Sponsored by Soul Calibur 5. 
if you like beating those malfested, this is the game for you. And buy it mal And of course, there is a game in November you should buy if you enjoy Creed and Assassins. And that is Assassins Creed Free. We got, another, got this triple threat match underway. He's just wearing the red and yellow. Angela Brennan, oof, wearing the red, red top and the black pants. And Lola Jazz with the pink hair and the orange. She's easy to spot. At least. Cobra clutch there from Lola Jazz. Ace just broke it up. What's going on here? Headlock. Oh, I'm, wrench. I'm wrench. I'm wrench. I say that's an arm wrench. Aestus. Ooh, what's she doing with Angela Brennan up there? <laughs> Just leaving her propped up there. That angel, that Angela Brennan, just looking like a one of those gargoyles outside a building. Just propped up there. Especially if they had those wings on. That would have been nice. Oh, I could hear that! Jesus! I could just hear that kick to the back of Aestus from Lola Jazz. It was like a gunshot, just bang! Stand here at ringside. Jason East drinking this coffee. Trip Martini just brought some coffee. That's, that's, thank you, Trip. Coffee's coffee's not supposed to be green. Okay, you gonna you gonna no stop putting more powder in it. That just makes it worse. Hold on, it's making my nose itch. I, I need to blow my nose. That's terrible. What have you put in this? Oh, hold on, let me just uh, blow my nose. Excuse me. There we go. There we go. Oh, thank you, Trip Martini. Trip Martini here at ringside didn't really say much. He said he had to leave. Triple threat women's match still on the way. Lolly Jazz, Andrew Lund Brennan, and Ace just respectively. Also got the referee in the ring. Referee Charles Robinson. Thank you for that, Charles Robinson. Oof, big drop kick there from Angela Brennan. Oh, just the smell of this. What what did he put in this? This is just like putrid. I shouldn't say that. I'll probably you'll probably be watching backstage. Ooh. Oh, nice Russian leg sweep. Russian leg sweep. Turn into Sean Connery. Ooh, collar and elbow tie up. I'm not sure why. I was excited for that collar and elbow tie up. Oh my word. Ooh. Elbows, elbows. Elbows everywhere from. Oof, and there we go, another forearm. Overhand right from Lula Jazz. Oof, oof, overhand left. Just these wild spl swinging blows from these two ladies. Three ladies. Sorry, I can't count. Two, three, maybe four. I'm not too sure this cough is taking effect. Oof. Face to the canvas. Just medicine. Medicine? Medicine? Medicine. Medicine. What? Whatever. Anyway, Angela Brennan. Nice body slam. There we go. Oof. Here we go. Aestus is going to start making a comeback here. Oop, snake eyes. Oh, the Jazz is just standing there watching it. Oh, big boot. There we go. Dropping that big leg. There we go. Oh, my goodness, indeed. Irish whip into the corner. Lola Jazz is there though. Russian leg sweep again. There we go. Angela Brennan, nice sleep to slam. Asus, he just laid there in the middle of the ring. Here we go. No, oh, no, nice suplex. Here we go again. Asus. From dusk till dawn, she just laid out Angela Brennan. Lola Jazz is there though. What's Lola Jazz going for? Oh, just slapped to the face. There we go. Oh, overhand right. Oh. <laughs> nice head scissors there from Angela Brennan. What is even going on? Lola Jazz going for that pin. This could be it. One, two. Oh, that could have been it. I thought that would have been it. That would have been crazy. 
Ooh, the judge is hitting them that hard there. I'm not too sure what from. Nope. Angela Brennan now with that advantage. Ooh, nice wheel kick. Oh, here we go. Nice head scissors. Head scissors, scissors. That coffee just ugh. I taste it in the back of my throat. Just awful. Where did, where did he get the stuff for that? I'm just. Oh, the jazz now. Oh, you see Angela Brennan just holding her head. She looks hurt. I feel hurt. Oh, nice move there. Reverse suplex from all the jazz in the top rope. Angela Brennan there now. Ooh, kill switch. Pull that kill switch. This could be it. Oh, Ace just <laughs> rolled over. Lily Jazz for Angela Brennan. Two. Oh, just a two count. He's just was going for something there. I'm not too sure what. Oh, oh there we go. Bad note. That was a bad note indeed. He's just is up though. Elbow to the face. Oh, went for a clothesline. Sending Lola Jazz over. Which of Lola's arm. Ah, poor Lola. Poor Lola indeed. I would like to know where she buys her hair dye. So I don't go there accidentally. Do ho ho. Oh. I have no idea what is even going on in this match. This is just turned into complete shenanigans. Complete. That drop kick. Oh my word. Oh, the Jazz going for a pin. Angela Brennan looks dizzy. One, two, three. No, no, oh, just think. Angela Brennan just broke that up. Angela Brennan just saving the match there. I completely thought that was over. I think she just got fingertips over, pushed. Oh, the Jazz off. Oh, the Jazz is on the top there. Oh, she's not doing anything from there. Oh, Aestus with that strength. I did not expect that kind of strength from Aestus, the small frame. Oh, just throwing those the jazz across the ring. Oh, it's going to go for a clothesline onto Angela Brennan there. Missed it. It's toe kick there to the gut of Angela. It's going for the shin breaker. Oof, well telegraphed. See, Lilic, I was just holding her head in pain. Receiving some sort of concussion. Oh, nice big boots to the face of Angela Brennan. This match has gone on for quite some time. See, we've got about six minutes left on the clock, I do believe. So this match has been going for about ten minutes at least. Surely. Oh, let's move that from Aestus. Swinging Netbreaker, I believe that is called Sunrise. Lola Jazz, nice DDT. Athleticism. Going around the clock. <laughs> All this athleticism from these three ladies. Aestus looks dizzy though. Going in for the cover. Aestus is there. Aestus. Two. Three. Angela Brennan wins this match. Oh my, Aestus could not get there quick enough for that dizziness. Here is your winner, Angela. Brennan. Angela Brennan pulling out this match. Wow, that was a strange match. Just, I did not expect that. Just considering, like, everything that went into this match, there wasn't really, like, many finishing maneuvers. Just a lot of technical wrestling. Not something you expect in a traditional triple threat matchup. Angela Brennan walks out of the win. Wait, what? It's Tufu attacking the Tag Team Champions. Mick Speed and a second Destroyer out of nowhere. I'm 
following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, weighing in at a combined weight of 379 pounds, the team of El Trippy Chan and El Beardy Chan, the New World Order. Here we go, the New World Order. Oh my word. I'm just getting over that backstage assault there. New World Order. Trippy Chan and Beardy Chan, mate. After they lost the Tag Team Championships, made their way to Japan. Beardy's hometown. They watched a lot of anime, they ate a lot of, of Pocky. And they walked out the New World Order, rebranding themselves. Oh, what an entrance. And their opponents first from Reno, Nevada. Weighing in at 287 pounds, Sam Humphrey. Sam Humphrey, here we go. Like I said, hoi. I just never have much to say about Sam Humphrey, and I'm going to have even less to say about his tag team partner. Just, like, can someone just get on the phone to Lance and ask him why they tagged up these two people? This is just ridiculous. How am I supposed to call this? Jason East, what am I doing? Hey. Sam Humphrey, though. Trying to prove himself. Himself? 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 Would that be correct? I'm sure in Japan, though, Beardy, Beardy Chan and Trippy Chan saw many like Sam Humphrey, so I think they're ready for it. They're ready for this match. Of course, you can tweet using the hashtag AES, hashtag WFL. And obviously, if you're a fan of the New World Order, hashtag NYUU, hashtag new. New, new, new World Order. And his partner, from your bedroom, weighing in at 182 pounds, Anal Dragon. Oh. Just, just what is this? I don't even. Hi. Anal Dragon, making his way to the ring. This is just the strangest... I was about to say, just considering the match that we had earlier on, this is the strangest match, but... My word, anal dragon. Certainly a fun favourite, but I, I have just no idea why. What, what just, what people see in anal dragon apart from like bleeding, but you know, I'm not even sure if Trippy Chan and Beardy Chan know what they're in for here tonight. It's like that anime, uh, Boko no. Uh, Trippy Chan in the white top hat, white pants, Sam Humphrey in the black singlet. Oh, Trippy, oh, those fabled shin kicks, those things of law. Certainly the shin kicks that injured the Sir Dan Danielson. But Sam Humphrey does not want any part of those shin kicks, and it's easy to see why. Oh, punches. Punches from Sam Humphrey. Oh, oh, nice suplex as well. Stayed right on top of him and brought his weight right on top of Trippy Chan. That big weight. Oh, dropped to hold it into the cross face. Trippy Chan. Been watching those Japanese wrestling tapes. I've heard this week he has been watching. Um, what did he say? He'd been watching. Been watching a bit of a Go Kaiju. Not too sure what else. I'll have to get onto him about that. I'll have to get onto him on Twitter. He says he's been watching a lot of anime this week. So, I don't think Coach Hydra is an anime, it's technically Sentai, but even still, he's been watching that Japanese stuff. New. Oh, big elbow. Big elbow? Big knee! Oh, you go for that shin kick again, just Sam Humphrey's been watching, instead of watching those anime, he's been watching Trippy's wrestling tapes, and I think it served him well. You can 
considering. Oh, nice sweep there. Just eliminating the legs. Oh, oh shin kicks, shin kicks. Oh, just every time I see that, I just shiver up my spine considering last time what happened. Oh, there we go. Ooh, back of the leg. Oh, he's going for that leg. Tripping there. Bit of a western standoff between these two wrestlers. Just, oh, anal dragon, stop bending over while you're in the ropes. <laughs> oh, shin kicks, shin kick. Sam Humphrey. Sam Humphrey. Oh, he's not telegraphing those shin kicks enough. Enough of that. Trippy, of course, being uh, believe he is being built from Newcastle, Japan, because there is a Newcastle in Japan. Is there a Newcastle in Japan? Oh, full Nelson there from Anal Dragon. I'm just reading my notes, and uh, apparently Newcastle's in Japan now. Probably like that one Castlevania game where Transylvania moves to Japan. But here we go. Oh, got wrench from Sam Humphrey. Trippy with those drop kicks as well. We see a lot of drop kicks from Trippy. Here we go, tag team maneuver. <laughs> drop toe hold and an elbow. Ooh, flip kick there from Eno Dragon. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is just the strangest. Like a little pink anal alien. Anal Dragon. Oh, what's he doing with Trippy up there on that top rope? Oh, Anal Kumrana. Just, oh, nice crucifix. Gonna go for the pin. One, two, oh, bitty chance there to break it up. Trippy's dizzy though. I think he might have smashed those glasses again. Oh, nice flip kick. Oh, Anal Dragon with shin kicks of his own. If it works for the top heart man, it works for the anal dragon. Oh, here we go. Show him how it's done. Trippy charm. A whirlwind! He's a dervish! That man cannot be stopped. Those 3D shin kicks. Oh, Cobra Clutch now. Oh, this could be it. This could be it. Oh, tri Trippy champ is just struggling there. In that Cobra Clutch. Oh, I'm sorry. I just noticed anal dragon's big hairy back. <sighs> Can he not even afford a razor? Trippy Chan just throws Anal Dragon in the corner. Oh. Here we go. Turnabout's fair play. Ooh. This needs the stomach of Anal Dragon. Goes back down to the map. Here comes Beardy Chan. Beardy Chan, of course, originally from Japan, from uh, Kyoto Shi Kyoto, Japan. Influencing his friend, Trippy Chan, to become a. A uh, otaku, such as himself. An otaku, of course, is a Japanese person who likes anime, they like sentai, they like. They, they are the Japanese equivalent of a nerd. And that is what Trippy Chan and Beardy Chan have become. Oof, embracing the Japanese culture. If a Trippy was just embracing the crowd barrier there, he just got shoved off the road by Anal Dragon. Snapmare into the chin lock. Trippy's up, though. Beardy Chan was gonna go for something there. Anal Dragon was ready. Oof. Rick in the eyes. This could be it. Oh. German suplex. Oof. Nice. Running. Drop. Kick. Oh, Just. Oh, Just driving those knees into Anal Dragon's stomach. When he's there through. His hands through that hair. Dropping that elbow. Here comes Trippy Chan. Oh, oh, going around. Small package, small package. This could be a one, two. Oh no, Sam Humphrey breaks it up. Here we go. You're watching WFL 13. Jason East here at ringside. He said you can follow us on Twitter using the hashtags WFL hashtag AES. Oh, nice DDT there from Anal Dragon. You see, hashtag new is trending worldwide on Twitter. <laughs> Big DDT. Oh, 
here we go. Oh, sure. Nice choke slam from Sam Humphrey. This could be the O to the end. Perhaps he's going. Oh, oh! I thought he was going to go for the man slam. Here we go now. What is this move? Oh, they're going coast to coast! Coast to coast, all the way across the... Oh, beardy cutter! This could be a... The beardy cutter. One, two... Oh, Sam Humphrey kicks out. It came all the way coast to coast from Japan, and then he went for that beardy cutter really quickly afterwards. Nice combination manoeuvre. Did not score them the pin, though. This match is still happening. Sam Humphrey now. Knees. Knees. Oh, he's got those overhands as well. Referee just has to get out of the way of there. Oh, nice net breaker there from Sam Humphrey. Oh, kicks at the stomach. Irish whip. It's Irish whips. Beardy Chan back into his corner. Oh, oh, nice wrestling maneuver there from Beardy. He's quiet as duck. Here we go, Beardy. What's he doing? Oh, power slam. Beardy's calling for something. Oh, big elbow again. Quite a long match. Tag team match has gone quite some time. I'm gonna see fatigue start to set in. These two tag teams oh Ain't no Dragon has him there. <laughs> I'm not sure what Ain't no Dragon's doing to him here. I'm glad we can't see it from this camera angle. Ooh, kicks and punches. Here we go, Ain't no Dragon's been brought back into the ring by Sam Humphrey. Oh drops a hold into elbow drop. Shin kicks. Why is it all these shin kicks? This is terrible. Oops, slap to the face. Just, it's playing ugly. More ways than one. Not today. Oh, no shin kicks today. Shin kicks are not on today's menu. Oof, ain't no dragons clutching his stomach, though. Probably after that. Does knees to the stomach bit to give him earlier on. Oh nice. Oh nice combination maneuver from the former tag team champions. Ain't no dragons up though. Oh <laughs> Trippy's getting out of there. Trippy's taking himself his top hat and his sunglasses out of there. His 3D glasses. Here we go. Here comes Beardy Champ. Oh nice. Kawaii boot. Here we go. One. Two, three. Honore in, old dragon. Honore. New World Order wins this match. Here are your winners. The team of El Birichan and El Tribichan. The New World Order. New World Order making themselves look strong here tonight. Certainly it was a revitalization for a, a good cause, I would say. They look very strong here tonight. Picking up the win here against Anal Dragon and Sam Humphrey. Your main event for the evening is a six-man tag match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, weighing in at a combined weight of 498 pounds, the team of Jacob Katz and Claudio Castagnoli, the Foundation. Foundation making their way to the ring. Main event tag team matchup. It's been built as a family feud. 
Uh, I don't think Jacob Cass and Claudio Castagnoli and Austin Asher are family. But take on the family of Juan Cortez. Juan? Juan Cortez, Chris O'Derrick, and Vic Vandal. Cortez cousins. And their partner from Austin, Texas, weighing in at 222 pounds, Austin Ash. Here we go, Austin Ash. He's got a bit of a uh, venom between Claudio Castanelli, Jim Cass, and Austin Ash. All men that have had some sort of a um, good slash bad relationship with general manager Lance Mazaros. We'll see if there's a bit of bad blood between these as we get this match underway. They take on the team of the lineage. The team formed a former world champion Juan Cortez, Chris O'Derek, and Vic Vandal. Except cousins, family, members. This will be the first match they've competed together. Not, not taking into account Chris O'Derek's match last week, where he was victorious with Vic Vandal in his corner. It was a straight up six man tag team match. And introducing their opponents, weighing in at a combined weight of 698 pounds, the team of Juan Cortez, Chris O'Derrick, and Vic Vandal, the Lineage. The Lineage making their way to the ring. See, they've got a bit of a cocky strut going on. Think themselves the future of WFL. Well, they've got a bit of a history behind them, you know, it's easy to see why. Certainly not fan favourites though. Booze fill the arena. Questionable tactics from these free men to get where they are in this business. And here we go. Former world champion Juan Cortez versus Jacob Cass starts this matchup. Irish Mexican versus Canadian. Jacob Cass with that nice kick there. Here we go. Oh, Cortez with that big kick though. He just answers. Call and response. Like an 80s pop song. Oh, speaking of 80s, nice butterfly suplex there from Juan Cortez. It's certainly cool indeed. Ooh, he's just. Oh, nice scissors kick. Back of the head of Jacob Cass. Ooh, kicking the face of the tomorrow in his face. Ooh, Jacob Cass with that flippy manoeuvre. Well, that moonsault off the ropes. Not normally see him hit those those high fly manoeuvres. He did hit that one though. He's got a fire lit under him here tonight. Perhaps my lunch with his arrows. He's good for that headlock. Jacob Cass looking strong. Oh, nice bulldog. Oh. We've got a lineage there showing there. Tag team bonding, perhaps? I'm not too sure the word for it. They probably know each other better than this team does, though. Claudio Castagnoli and Jacob Cass do know each other quite well. The foundation. But do they know each other as well as the Cortez cousins? The lineage! And of course, we've got the third man in that team, the found, as well as the foundation. We've got Austin Ash. He's got a bit of a, oof, got a bit of a grudge against Lance Mizaros, so do I say. But here we go, anyway. Jacob Carson, Juan Cortez, still in the ring. Oof, just cleared Juan Cortez out from underneath him. Oh, oh, nice close land there from Juan. Flip kick. Here we go. Here comes Vic Vandal, the saboteur from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, and here comes Claudio Castagnoli. Bit of a change up there. Claudio, the bigger man now. Here we go. Take him on a ride. Oh, Death Valley Driver. That was beautiful. That was pretty good. Gotta say, Claudio Castagnoli. Technical expertise. 
I also known for his brawling, though. Will he be able to match up with Vic Vandal? Oh. Claudio's ready, though. Oh, hey! Very European uppercut. Those are what he's known for. Of course, the very European. Claudio Castagnoli. Been put in the Irish Mexican corner. Oh, nice move. Oh, and a follow up there. Alright, limits elbow drop from Juan Cortez. In here comes Chris O'Dare. Quick tags. Quick tags. Gotta use that tag team expertise. Oh, cheap shot. Vit Vandal lets Chris O'Dare to get the advantage. He's a wine drinker, but not a whiner, he likes to say. Chris O'Dare. Oh, big back suplex lifts up the big man, Claudio. Claudio's been putting on blast right now. On those ropes, literally. Nice and Zaguri. Oh, Chris O'Derek just giving Claudio the boots. Not good enough though. Chin lock from Claudio Castagnoli in the middle. With those robes, Chris O'Derek. I don't think he was close enough. He just had to struggle out of that. CJ Cass and Austin Ash on the apron there. Austin Ash hasn't been in this match yet. A strength manoeuvre there. Claudio, and here we go. Prove me wrong, Austin Ash in this match for the first time. Austin Ash got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Wants to prove himself here. Wants to prove himself to Lance Mazzaro. Wants to prove himself to all of his haters. Face off against Chris O'Derek right now. Ooh, he's a big bulldog there. Here we go, and of course, since Juan Cortez and... Excuse me, since Juan Cortez and Jay Gunn won their tag team match last week, they get to name which championship they will go after. And I believe Juan Cortez has already chosen the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm not to hear off Jay Gunn yet. Although some wonder whether he will go after his... Intercontinental Championship, or we'll move up the rung and go after the World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, excuse me, just... Ooh, Russian leg sweep. Excuse me, Jay Gunn, you got to choose. Juan Cortez did not... Excuse, yeah, so, sorry, I just got completely confused. There. Juan Cortez did not get that World Heavyweight Championship rematch. That's what he's volleying for right here. Excuse me, I just like must have misread that completely. But Jay Gunn does get that World Heavyweight Championship matchup if he does desire so. <sighs> and I am being told on headset that Jay Gunn has confirmed that he does want the World Heavyweight Championship. So in a future event of WFL, we will see Jay Gunn versus Ooh, Super Kick! Not versus Super Kick, but versus the World Heavyweight Champion at the time. It might be Derek Bryson. Perhaps it might be a triple threat matchup. It's completely off the wall right now. Just completely confused myself with that one. Excuse me. Let's get back to this matchup. Vit Vandal with that headlock there. In the friendly corner. The corner of the lineage. Slamming. Jacob Cass fades into the mat. Oh, big DDT. Ooh. The saboteur really taking it to the face of the future. Face of tomorrow. Winner of NXT. Oh, nice move there. Ooh, bit of a brawl going on between these two. We saw a big brawl go on earlier on tonight in that triple threat matchup. Kirby T. Washington walked out the winner. Oh, here we go, Austin Ash. Oh, we just got knocked over. Sent to the outside. Vit Vandal didn't want any of that. Oh, stunning that to Claudio. Vit Vandal's clearing house. He's going crazy. Jeez. Claudio Costagnoli just thrown into the ring apron there. Oh, nice reverse body slam. Oh, it's all breaking down right now. Austin Ash. Oh. Could you not zoom in anymore, cameraman? That's terrible. I believe Claudio Costagnoli. He's just fighting Vic Vandal. There. Austin Ash coming to his aid. Not Claudio. Just slamming. Vic Vandal. Referee's counting. I don't think it's doing much good. Juan Cortez being brought into the ring by Austin Ash. Do believe the legal men are Austin Ash and Vic Vandal. 
Yes, I believe. Yes, that is true. Crucifix now from Vic Randall. I'm not too sure what happened when the camera's there. Oh! <laughs> Austin, I think he wants to continue that fight with Vic Randall. I don't think he cares about the tag team matchup. I think he just wants to beat someone up here tonight. I just want to kick someone's behind. The mask of the mind wants to kick someone's behind. Ho ho ho. Vic Vandal's certainly certainly up for a fight though. Here we go. Oh we surfing USA. A stretch there from Chris O'Derek. Stretching Austin Ash, that's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt pretty much every appendage on your body. Oh nice move there. Chris O'Derek is doing a bit of a bit of a dance. It's calling for something. Oh, beautiful out DDT. This could be it if he pins Austin Ash. The house has been cleared. Referee. One, two. Oh, Austin Ash kicks out. That was a beautiful, beautiful out DDT. But Austin Ash did manage to kick out. Claudio Castanelli is calling for the tag. Austin Ash is staying in for it though. They're calling Mastermind for a reason. He surely has a plan. Oh. Oh, there we go. Austin Ash going for the cover now. He's in the friendly corner. One, two, oh. Very close again. Swing and a DDT from Austin Ash. This matchup has been. Oh, off the rails. Here we go. Jacob Cass. Jacob Cass. Bang! Elbow to the face. What's he going for here? Oh, oh, he's gonna go for. He's gonna grab Chris O'Derek. Chris O'Derek just gets out of there. Jacob Cass clutching his head. Probably got something wrong with him. Oh, big power slam. Oh, here we go. One, two. Oh, what happened there? I think everyone just collided at once. If it vandal. Oh, there we go again. Knees to the stomach of Cla uh, Jacob Cass. What is he even going on? Speaking of Claudio Castagnoli, what's he doing over there with Chris O'Derek? Bit vandal there. Been bounced off the ropes. Oh, nice arm drag. That was just like a car wreck in the middle of the ring. More ways than one. Oh, God. Here we go. Jacob Cass. Oh, he didn't hit it, of course. Oh, he kind of did. Oh, super kick! Super kick! Knocks Vic Vandal down. Vic Vandal's up though. Oh, Austin Ash. What is even going on? This is crazy. Chris O'Dake being thrown back into the corner. Foundation tag team member Claudio is waiting. Oh, Chris O'Dake's heard of it though. This match is crazy. Into the stomach of Chris O'Dake. Here we go. Oh. Jacob Cass, of course. He's got to get his moonsault in there. It cost him. It cost him. It cost him dearly. Well. Hashtag Cass. <laughs> Chris O'Derek taking a leaf out of Jacob Cass's book now. What is even going on? Someone needs to reinforce those ropes. Everyone just keeps slipping. I think it's Anal Dragon's oil. When Anal Dragon was on the ropes, just his oil just must have... I don't know. Here we go. Juan Cortez is in this match. Ooh, just got sent out of the ring again by Claudio Castagnoli. There's a lot of... Oof. No love lost between these six men. Just beating the hell out of each other. Completely. Ooh, big boo in the corner to... Chris O'Derek. I don't even think Chris O'Derek's the legal man. What is Claudio Castagnoli doing? There we go. Collision there. One Cortez. Oh, drop kick to the back of Claudio. Nice arm drag. One Cortez now to the outside. Oh, spring bomb maneuvers everywhere and none of them are hitting. Punches and punches. Oh, Claudio just punishing Juan Cortez for that. Sends him over the ropes again. The second time in this match. Maybe the third. I'm not too sure. I think that was with Vandal earlier. Even still. 
A lot of high flying moves in this match, and none of them are paying off. Here we go. Oh, Spine Buster. Claudio Castanelli's calling for something. This could be the serenade of the end. Oh, this can only be one thing. Ricola Bomb! He's got to go for that cover. One, two, three! Claudio Castanelli wins it with that Ricola Bomb! Oh, my word. Here are your winners, Jacob Katz, Claudio Castagnoli, and Austin Ash. Wow, the lineage not looking very strong here tonight. Jacob Katz, Claudio Castagnoli, and Austin Ash walking out the win. Ooh, the former World Heavyweight Champion being pinned by Claudio. Not going to be impressed with that. Does not seem to be. I would not be impressed with that. Ladies and gentlemen, what... What a great match we've had. What a great evening we've had. Oh, appears it's not over. Not sure what Austin Ash is saying. Oh, here comes Lance Mazzaros. I believe he's calling out Lance Mazzaros to the ring. Perhaps after the words exchanged between these, I think Austin Ash is still a bit angry. Lance Mazzaris has ostracised him. Not sure what's going to go down here. Harsh words between these two. Oh, Austin Ash looks a bit angry though. Oh, what's going on? Oh! The Foundation, Lance Mazzaro's just attacking Austin Ash out of nowhere. Oh, vicious beatdown. Oh, poor Austin Ash. There we go, though. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Jason East. This has been WFL 13. Thank you for watching, and good night.